Now before we proceed with the code, let us first understand in theory the rendering process in React. When we run a React application, the code written in our components gets translated into elements that get mounted onto the DOM. The React documentation splits this work into two phases, render phase and commit phase. The first phase is the render phase. During this phase, React will start at the root of the component tree and goes downwards to the leaf components. While traversing, for each of the component, React invokes the createElement method and converts the component's JSX into React elements and stores that render output. React elements are basically JavaScript objects that describe the structure of your UI. Once the JSX to React elements conversion is done for the entire component tree, all the React elements are handed over to the commit phase. In the commit phase, the React elements are applied to the DOM using the React DOM package. I hope this is clear to you. However, I do have to mention that this is the rendering behavior for just the initial render of your React application. And we all know that in React, components need to re-render in order to update the UI. So let's also understand the two phases, but this time with respect to a re-render scenario. During the render phase, React will start at the root of the component tree and goes downwards to the leaf components, finding all the components that have been flagged as needing updates. A component can flag itself for an update by calling the useStateSetter function or calling the useReducerDispatch function. Then for each of the flagged components, React will invoke the createElement method and converts the component's JSX into React elements and stores that render output. Once the conversion is done for all the flagged components and the components affected by the flagged components, React will compare the new set of React elements with the ones that were produced from the last render. A list is created with all the changes that need to be made to the DOM and handed over to the commit phase. In the commit phase, the changes are actually applied to the DOM. What I want to stress here is the fact that rendering is not the same as updating the DOM. This distinction is very important because a component may be rendered without any visible changes to the DOM. For example, during rendering, if the component converts into the same React element as it did in the previous render, the elements are discarded and no changes are applied to the DOM. This distinction is even more necessary because a common notion is that the performance issues are because of slow DOM updates. Let me tell you that React handles DOM updates efficiently in the sense that all updates are batched and updated at once. This helps reduce the performance issues incurred by updating the DOM multiple times in rapid succession. In fact, if you refer to the React docs, it states that the commit phase is usually very fast, but rendering can be slow. This single line is sufficient enough a reason for us to try and better understand how components render, why do they re-render, and how do we optimize the rendering of a component. That knowledge will help you write more performant React applications. Now, since the initial render is straightforward, our focus in the series is mainly on the re-rendering aspect of components. So to really get this into our heads, I want to summarize the rendering behavior during a re-render scenario. React does the re-rendering work in two phases, render phase and commit phase. During the render phase, React first finds all the components that are flagged as needing an update. Then for all such flagged components, 
the JSX is converted into React elements using the create element method and the result is stored. React will then perform what is known as reconciliation, which is diffing the old and the new tree of React elements, also known as virtual DOM, and hands over the changed elements to the commit phase. During the commit phase, the changes are applied to the actual DOM. So with this understanding, let's write some code and start with a few trivial examples about rendering in React. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.